the question becomes, how does CBD oil impact anxiety and what is actually happening in the brain and physiologically that's making these changes? So we mentioned earlier that the hippocampus is the storage area for these memories in the brain, right? And people who have anxiety dig up these, these bad memories, consciously or subconsciously, and that induces anxiety. Well, the hippocampus, I want to make sure I say this correctly, so excuse me for referencing, but it has both CB1 and CB2 receptors. So when you're in an anxious event, what occurs is there has to be something that brings your hippocampus to, they call it an excitatory threshold, okay? So for a, a person who doesn't suffer from anxiety, they're walking around outside and a car goes speeding by. It's not close to them. It's nowhere near them. And my brain recognizes that and it says, okay, that car was far away. Why are they driving so fast? I don't care. I move on. It doesn't make me anxious. Now maybe you have a person who was hit by a car and suffers from PTSD or anxiety. A car goes speeding past them. Again, they're well out of the path of the danger, but the car is going fast and they see it. Their hippocampus is going to reach that excitatory threshold much, much, much sooner than when my brain did. So my brain doesn't get excited by the car going fast. Their brain says, oh my gosh, I'm in danger. I'm going to get run over again. I have to get out of here. So there's a misfiring in the brain. They're connecting that misfiring now to the CB1 and CB2 receptors in the hippocampus. Something CBD oil does is it binds to the CB2 receptors and it decreases that excitatory threshold. So in theory, the speeding car goes by again and the person who had suffered from being hit at one point sees that. Now they should be saying to themselves, oh, that made me nervous, but I'm not totally going to freak out. That car is far away from me. It, it wasn't anywhere near me. I'm going to be okay. The CBD binds to the receptors in that memory area of the brain, and it kind of helps to suppress those bad memories so that part of the brain doesn't get fired up. So that's one of the primary ways that CBD physiologically addresses anxiety. Now, they, they did an experiment with mice, and they put mice in a maze with uh, a snake. They put a snake in the maze with the mice, right? Naturally, the mice were terrified. That's their predator. So as I mentioned, like humans, these mice are going to get a hit of adrenaline and they're going to have to figure out what to do next. How do we get away from the snake? Now, they gave half of the mice CBD oil prior to this experiment. What they found was the mice who received CBD oil, two things happened. They didn't go from a zero to a 1,000 response and they also didn't freeze in fear. So some of the mice without CBD oil, and people who suffer from anxiety know this. You go into work one day, you have terrible anxiety, and you do nothing. You're frozen. People, um, victims of verbal and physical abuse commonly experience this. You can't move. They noticed in these mice, that didn't happen. But at the same time, the mice weren't irrationally acting out. They were going through the maze in a very strategic, thought-out manner. As compared to some of the other mice that didn't receive CBD, they either froze or they were so panicked, they couldn't pick the correct direction and wound up going the wrong way. When they looked at the, the scores for each of the mice, they found that the CBD did not negatively impact the decision making either, which obviously with THC, a lot of people will smoke because they have anxiety or utilize um, marijuana with THC in it. THC can have the opposite effects. THC can certainly have negative effects on anxiety and decision making. They also did an experiment with human test subjects for anyone that's never been in front of a camera, and don't do this if you have terrible anxiety, but if you just have, you know, you've never talked in front of a camera, set up your phone and film yourself talking, and then try and put that online. See how nerve wracking that is. It's actually a very scary situation for some individuals. So they did a test, and they took people and they said, okay, we're going to have you speak in front of a camera, in front of an audience. And they gave people, I believe it was a dose of um, around 100 milligrams of CBD. And they actually found that the people who took the CBD had much less of this social, social anxiety disorder when it came to speaking in front of the camera. They went a step further in this study and they actually looked at the neuroimaging, so the uh, scans of the brains in these individuals, and they found that areas of the brain that will just say light up when there's an anxiety-inducing event didn't light up as much for the individuals who took CBD. Now I'll make two other points, and these ones are particularly important for those suffering from PTSD. CBD, as we've mentioned before, it has a direct effect on serotonin. So when someone's under chronic stress, your body's constantly releasing adrenaline. That's that fight-to-flight hormone. When you have constant adrenaline being released, 
That's what crushes cortisol levels over time, okay? When you have crushed cortisol and high adrenaline, serotonin, your feel-good hormones, they don't exist anymore. They've been obliterated. And the receptors that it would normally bind to to turn on those feel-good hormones are also pretty much destroyed. So what they found is people utilizing CBD, it binds to serotonin, so turning on that feel-good hormone, and it also appears that it kind of cleans off those receptors. It freshes them up to be more responsive to serotonin. So a lot of people who suffer from anxiety have depression with it. This is a great potential route of exploration for them to go down when it comes to CBD. That would be one of the things that I always like to emphasize to people, it's effects on serotonin. That's why I believe we see when people use CBD and they're on anti-anxiety medications or, or de medications for depression, they find that they need to take less of it. I think down the line, research is going to argue, much like it currently is with opioids, that it's not only helping the individual, but it's making those medications much more effective in the long run. You want to start very slow. So I usually start people around 10 milligrams a day, and I don't have anyone where we're above 200 milligrams a day. At that point, we're really approaching cautiously. I would say on average 10 to 100 milligrams a day is probably going to do the trick for people. But remember, it has a biphasic effect. So at uh, the perfect dose, that sweet spot dose of maybe, let's say, 40 milligrams for an individual, they feel great. They might take 60 milligrams and feel more anxious. We've seen this happen. I tell those people, don't, don't fret. If we started at a level that was too high for them, that's great because you know what? We know it's going to impact you. We know it's ha having an effect on you. So we simply cut it back for the individual.